Today we're going to be looking at Strawberry Leopard in the color Prismatic Purple. I'm very excited to see how this is going to turn out because on my swatches it's kind of blue. But my diluted one looks quite purple. So this will be fun. Anyways, you may notice that my swatches are labeled 1 through 12, but that is not synonymous with hair levels. I do different video clips and pictures and such near the end of the video, so the numbers just help us keep track of each swatch. These are human hair swatches, but they are not virgin hair. They've all been chemically colored, bleached, or treated at some point in their existence. One is green. Usually when I do purples, I get a lot of requests to do green swatches, so that's what that's for. Two is gray, three is a natural red, four is a soft black, and then four to 11 is a range that goes to a platinum blonde, and then number 12 is like a toned version of number 11. So I will take the color and I will apply it directly to the top of each swatch. Some people do like to dilute their dyes, so I will then do a diluted version at the bottom of each swatch. Please keep in mind, everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take color differently. Plus, of course, different screens and monitors can make colors look different, so please just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly turn out for you. For the diluted section, we're going to do a 2 to 1 ratio, so that will be one part of our dye to two parts diluter. If you're unaware on what diluter is, my simple answer is that it is something that lightens the color of your semi-permanent dye. Usually each brand will sell their own version of a diluter that you can use. It'll have the same consistency as your dye, but to keep things fair between all of my videos, I always just use a plain white conditioner for diluting. All right, I'm gonna let this sit for about three hours so that the color has time to really absorb into the hair. I will then rinse it out, and when they're dry, I'll meet you back here, and we can do some comparisons. So my very first thought, I would say, is that this is not as purple as I was expecting just based off of the name. I was expecting it to be a little bit more of maybe like a wisteria kind of color, just slightly more on the purple side. To me, it kind of looks a little bit more periwinkle, but I will say, from memory anyways, this does seem to be a little bit more cool toned than the more periwinkle colors that I do have, so we'll compare those a little bit later and see if that is true. So number one was originally green. The prismatic purple did color the direct dye portion, um, but it does still have a very green kind of look to it. It kind of muted it down and darkened it a bit. But I wouldn't necessarily say it took away a lot of green. I still see a lot of it coming through. And then on the diluted section, I do see a slight difference. Again, it's a little bit darker and dustier, but definitely very green. I don't really see any blue or purple coming through on the bottom. Number two was originally gray. That one is always the most cool toned result out of all of my swatches. And I would say on that one, it probably does look the most purple. But I personally don't know if I'd ever look at that and think to myself that it looks purple. To me, it still looks pretty blue. 
but it is nice and I do see a difference on the diluted section as well. But I would say that the gray did keep the color looking a little bit darker and dustier compared to the blonde swatch. Three was the natural red. As usual, the result is kind of similar to like six or seven. I do see a difference on top, but it is quite minimal. I would say maybe it did take out some of the reddish tones and neutralized it a tiny bit, but it doesn't look super pigmented, so I'm not convinced that this would stay in anyone's hair for too long if you did have reddish or brownish hair. I don't see a difference on number four either. I think the blue really starts to come through more so on number eight. Again, I see a difference on number seven, but it more so just darkened and ashened up the hair a bit. And maybe that is something you'd want, but I would definitely do a strand test just in case. There's also probably a difference on five and six that I'm not fully seeing because they still look brown. There's a chance that the undertone, again, is a little bit ashier and darker than it was before. But because they're not necessarily like blue, I'm gonna say I don't see a big difference. And even though I can see blue coming through on eight, I think you should have at least something pretty, pretty light, like the number 10 or lighter for a color like this, which is pretty normal. Usually the very cool toned blues and purples struggle to take on hair that's anything darker than like a light blonde. If you're going for something a little bit more of like a steel blue, then maybe having slightly medium blonde hair would be okay. I, again, am just worried that it wouldn't necessarily stay in, especially if your hair is virgin, because virgin hair tends to be a lot more resistant to zemi permanent colors. Now, usually with colors like this, I tend to like the number 12 swatch the most. Having that toned hair first seems to help the blues and purples take better, but I actually think I like the number 11 the most because it's a little bit brighter now, granted, some people may still need to tone their hair before using a color like this, just depends on how yellow your hair is, but the brightness of the platinum blonde underneath did kind of show through with this color. I am happy to say that it doesn't look very green at all on the diluted sections. I would say the most it does look a little bit warmer on the number 10 diluted section than the 11, but it's very minimal. And I'm assuming any coolness that might exist from a purple is probably why. So I'm thinking that if your hair naturally is not as yellow, you might have a slightly more purple outcome. But now I think it'd be a good time to get into the comparison so I can show you what I mean when I say that I think this is still cool toned for a periwinkle. The first periwinkle I wanted to show you guys is Lunar Tides. So this is comparable to number 12. Number 11, number 10, and number 9. So for the Lunar Tides line, I would say that their periwinkle is quite cool toned for like a lighter blue, but compared to other brands, it's still pretty warm. And it actually kind of reminds me of Arctic Fox's Poseidon, where it's still pretty cool toned blue. It doesn't lean super green. And especially compared to the prismatic purple, you can see just how warm the Lunar Tides Periwinkle is. My dog is barking in the background, so I hope you can't hear that. Um, but I will say that blues that lean slightly more warm do usually take on darker hair a little bit better, so there are some pros and cons to both colors. The other Periwinkle I wanted to show you today is a little bit more cool toned compared to the Lunar Tides. So this is Arctic Fox in the color Periwinkle. This is comparable to number 12. Number 11, number 10, and number 9. So first thing I want to mention is that the very first time I used Periwinkle on my channel, the color turned out extremely pastel on my swatches, and I had some people telling me that they had the same thing happen to them, and I had other people telling me that it always looks much more pigmented on their hair, so I ended up redoing it. This is the redo of it and it definitely is a lot more pigmented. When I first did it, it was a lot like the diluted section. So that is the one thing I will say about this color is that because it is so light and pastel, some people really, really do struggle to use it. Now it is a little bit warmer than the prismatic purple. The prismatic purple definitely is a lot more cool toned. It's a really nice cool toned blue if you want 
truly a cool toned blue, but you can see both of them as the swatches get a little bit darker, they start to kind of fade out a little bit and not be as pigmented as they are on the Platinum Blonde swatch, so neither of these would probably be amazing for darker hair. If you have hair that takes color really well, you'd probably be totally fine with Periwinkle, um, but if you have hair that doesn't, the Prismatic Purple might be a better option. The only thing is that the Prismatic Purple is a little bit more cool toned in comparison, so you kind of have to weigh your pros and cons with these, but I will say I do at least see a lot more purple coming through now that I've seen it next to the other Periwinkles. To me, it's still blue, but if you see it as purple, I can totally see why now. All right, so now I'd like to get into the before and after clips. Those, as well as anything you see past this point, will all be done in natural lighting. I hope my video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form that you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so very, very much to my patrons, and thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.